Tony, thanks for making time to speak to us. Sure, and pleasure. congratulations on your new film. Thank you very much. This isn't the first role you've played where there's a real element of tragedy and sadness, far from it, in fact. How hard is it to leave that at work? Oh, look, generally it's been really easy, but I have to say with Missy already, it was, um, it was, it took a long time to shake. It was, it's kind of, I've never played someone who had to kind of look their mortality dead in the eye. It's intense. Is it something that you then think about for yourself when you've been thinking about that all day at work? I think it's inevitable there's some kind of, you know, spillage into your own day. Um, and I thought about it a lot because there's kind of a responsibility telling a story about someone going through the experience of living with cancer. That, you know, it would be an insult to get it wrong. So I did a lot of re research, spoke to a lot of different people, um, both who'd, who'd had it, who'd survived it, um, family members, all kinds of specialists and doctors and nurses. And everyone was so giving with their time. And I think it really helped that part of the film. We found out a week ago and you haven't told Kit yet. I have to have chemotherapy, like, straight away. I'm gonna be bald. Oh, lots of people are bald. Oh, men are bald, Jess. Babies, E.T., not me. They might take my tits away. They haven't said that yet. Not for sure. Well, I mean, how much cancer can you have? You've had all your checkups. Well, I've been busy. Oh, Jesus. I've got, to, I've got to say though, the film is like really exuberant. It sounds like it's, it is, there are heavy moments, but I think it's what I love about um, the types of films that I kind of want to make are tonally confusing. You know, there's just, there, there is a, an absolute kind of joyous, um, life-affirming uh, feeling to this movie as well as great pr and profound sadness. Well, it's, I think because it's about it's not really about death, it's about friendship probably more it's than anything. It's about female friendship, yeah. And it's about appreciating what you have. And it's, you know, a platonic love, it's so, um, you know, between girlfriends especially, it's just so strong and vital. And, you know, when two women just get each other and it kind of surpasses everything else, it's just the most beautiful thing. Is acting something that requires practice in the way that musicians require practice? Uh, no, because I think with um, with acting, it's about being present in the moment and making something feel as real as possible. However, the more I do it, the more relaxed, relaxed I am. And so there's not, when I was younger, I used to be much kind of more nervous, but I kind of have the ability to focus. And I suppose being relaxed allow, allows things to really flow. So perhaps that has to do with experience. So when you're playing a practice. role, <laughs> when you're playing a role such as the one in this film and you know, when you're in the moment doing a particular scene, are you thinking all the time, you know, here's what I now need to do with my face, here's what I need to do it with a gesture, or does that <laughs> no, happen? you're just... not thinking. Well, on a good day, at its very best, you're not thinking. You're, at, you're not there, you're just, you're just in the moment. It's like meditation. That's when it's at its best and most exciting. And also, if you're working with another actor, like Drew Barrymore, on a, on a, I wanted her to do this because I'm such a fan and she's like the ultimate girl's girl. But she, I never knew she was just, she's so grounded, so warm, so open. And to work with an act, another actor who's completely open and present, that's when stuff starts to happen that you can't even imagine happening when you're reading it, you know? Something electric happens and that's really exciting. <laughs> It's so intangible, that sort of chemistry, though, isn't it? Because you don't necessarily know when you meet someone. No way, you can't determine it. So, yeah, you, you don't really ever know. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you mind all these years later, you know, it's 20 years since Muriel's wedding came out. I, I presume know. people still probably stop you in the street. All the time. Do you mind? Not at all. I mean, it's kind of, um, it's a wonderful compliment that people, that the film is still relevant and that people really still relate to Muriel and what she goes through. Um, and also, it gave me a life I could never have even imagined. Like, I wouldn't be sitting here, you know? It was, I did that because I loved it, and I was lucky to get the job at the time. Um, but I didn't even contemplate that there was gonna be an audience. I was so just into what I was doing, and then it just changed everything. Um, I've got a confession to make to you. Oh my God, what is it? 
We have actually met once before. Yes. Because when you were a young 21-year-old doing your first round of interviews for Muriel's Wedding, I was a young 21-year-old reporter in Brisbane. Come and on. you, I was, and you were one of was the first people Was it for that funny, um, there was a convention up there for, or was um, it for the release of Muriel's it Wedding? It was for show, it was for the release of Muriel's Wedding. I brought a little clip to show you, in fact. It was from <laughs> Channel 9. Here we go, people. It was Channel, <laughs> Channel 9 in um, Brisbane. Oh, look at PJ, he looks so young. Oh, look at me, I look like another person. <laughs> I still know the choreography. Muriel's wedding had its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. The response was phenomenal. Listen to my voice, how dreadful. It's, it's very serious journalism. What do you think it is about the film that makes people like it so much? <laughs> I think everyone feels like Muriel at some stage. Yeah, I think there's Muriel in everybody. How cute are we? <laughs> Your baby. I apologise for inflicting that haircut of mine on you. <laughs> and I remember that because um, I loved Muriel's wedding so much, and you were so mature and gracious. And I asked the dumbest questions in the world. That's so, yes, I'm, amazing. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so I apologise all these years later. Oh, <laughs> not needed, not at all. Does that feel like a long time ago, or does it feel like five minutes ago? It does feel like a long time ago. I mean, it was. <laughs> um, it's half my lifetime ago. So a lot's happened. Yeah. If you met young Tony Collette now, what advice would you give her? Enjoy it all. Just enjoy it. And don't, like, I used to just feel so, um, I think, you know, for any young person, just to trust yourself. You know more than you think you do. And I used to just kind of sit on my opinions or um, just not speak up about stuff because I thought everybody else knew better. I know some stuff. A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> Coincidentally, this year I seem to have interviewed lots of people for whom success has come quite late in their life and they've talked about the benefits of that. Success came for you really young. Was that something that was difficult um, to deal with or how did you actually cope it, with that in your uh, It was strange and I still don't entirely kind of recognise it or understand it or see, see it properly, I don't think. I, I think because I'm on the other side of it, it's just a weird one to kind of completely um, get. And what is next for you? I'm doing a film in Australia, actually. I'm coming home in November to shoot. Uh, it's an adaptation of a beautiful novel that I actually tried to option years ago when it first came out called Jasper Jones. It's a young adult novel and it's a beautiful story set in the 60s um, about a community that that is changing. It's great. Sounds good. Well, shall we make a date to rendezvous again in 20 years' time? I dare you. <laughs> Come on, shake on it. Can't Thanks, wait. Tony. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. <laughs>